Magic Night. So it's an artisans and makers market that travels throughout the Broadway district and every time you go to one, it'll be a little bit different. So not only does the locations change, the music changes and the artists change and the live demonstrations are all different. So you can go to all four of them and it won't be the same event, which is kind of cool because, you know, even like the farmer's market, like it's generally is the same concept every week, um, but nothing is really the same with Ignite, and I think that that's one of the cool pieces about it. All right, so we are here at the Ignite market tonight. It's the first Ignite market of the season. These are arts, music, culture festival, basically. And today we have these flowers here. These are symbols of kindness. People can gift these as an act of kindness. And let's just see how beautiful it can get tonight. So it's up to you, whatever catches your eye here. So with Father's Day in mind, am I allowed to give a flower? I think yes. so. I think that's okay. very fitting. And I am picking these ones because of this one, which reminds me of the sun, which is how you make me feel all the time. Because you take care of our kiddo so well, and you guys go on lots of fun adventures together, and you make sure that he doesn't just have the regular sit down and play with toys, but you really get out into nature and have fun, and you take care of him. So please let me. Happy Father's Day. You're alone, okay, but not for long. Okay. <laughs> to my friends already. Yeah, perfect. Um, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, she's got I'm company now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so. sure, but I need to find some of here on the end over here, like this one. Okay, weird. Yes. Is that woman over there? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, or her. All right, so what do I have to do? Whatever you want to say, you can say this is an act of kindness, I just want to give this to you, for whatever reason you feel compelled to. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hi. Hello. How is everything today? We are enjoying the show here by oh, Evergreen Productions. By Evergreen Productions. I, Ever Green Productions. I am so sorry to interrupt you, but I would like to give you flowers. Thank you so oh, much. Beautiful. God bless you. What's yes. the occasion? You're an extraordinary person. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, so they're beautiful, just, aren't they? And I picked oh, those out especially oh, for you. They're beautiful. Thank you so oh, much. thank you You're so much. This is, you couldn't have picked a better person. That's right. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. And I mean that because I love and appreciate flowers so much. I'm sure do I, may I give you a hug? Uh, of course you may. <laughs> <laughs> what is your name? Well, my name is Gail. Oh, nice to meet you, Gail. I'm Sheila. Oh, so nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored that I was selected. I can't appreciate it. Thank you so much. Are you guys pedal pushers? Is that what I just saw? That's what that is. We are not. Oh, okay. I know there's a reason for moving to Green Bay, Wisconsin from Colorado, and it's the people that are here. I'm at my first Ing night. I call it Ing or IG night. And I am walking past a booth that has flowers, beautiful flowers to give away to a complete stranger, a random stranger. Wow, what an idea. Now I was able to find a couple that was sitting down at the park on a bench and they looked like the perfect couple and she was so appreciated and so blessed with a complete stranger. So wow, awesome. I think markets like this give a stage for people who wouldn't otherwise have one because it's really difficult as an independent artist to get a platform to show your work anywhere, especially if you're not already with a business or collective that is already well known. As an independent, you really have to struggle to make a name for yourself, so this kind of puts everybody on equal footing, I think. It gives everybody a chance to share what they have to offer with the community at large and to bring attention to aspects of the artistic community that may not otherwise be seen in the light of day, as it were. I'm very impressed. So we're from Appleton, and so they do like the Bazaar After Dark, and there's yeah. a few things in that area. But this is really, it's a nice setup. They seem very professional, and so I'm enjoying it. It's a great kind of liminal space that pops up where people can share whatever they've got in really natural ways. So. All right. No, no. All right. Are you just going to grab somebody? Or? Yeah. Okay, cool. Go ahead. These flowers are for you. I hope you have a very good evening. Oh. And have a good night. Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, so if you guys want, I mean, all of you guys can do it too. It's not, oh, really? you know, it's not like a limit or anything. If you guys want, okay. you know, yeah. like yeah. grab four of them, yeah. do like a bouquet together and give it to like all a cute little family. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. a really That's good idea. Yeah, you guys want to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. definitely. You can eat. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Is this your wife? No, sir. No? Well, are you here alone? Yeah. Yeah? Well, we're doing a random act of kindness today. Um, You're the ones that I we, we, I yell because <laughs> we've, I... We've, we've, we thought you, you should, uh, you deserve these flowers to maybe put in your house. Yes. You know, look at Thank it every you. day just to remind yourself that life I, is beautiful, you know? I found one of your packages underneath the bush. My packages? I don't have my yeah. packages. It was this a bag of money. For... Oh, that's not mine. <laughs> it was $27. <laughs> a 10, two fives, five singles, and two dollars and quarters with R-A-L-K. And I had to have a friend of mine analyze it for me on what does this mean? <laughs> random acts of kindness. It said, yay, congratulations, enjoy. Oh, and it was in a sealed plastic bag under a bush <laughs> by a Christmas tree from my house. Well, now you got wow. these to go with it. Yeah, and I know just the right bartenders to give these to. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. well, friends of mine just opened up a restaurant called Pepper down next to Jake's Pizza. And they got great quesadillas. Oh, that would look great up on there. Yeah, yeah. and they're brand new, so awesome. this right. will really welcome them to the neighborhood. Yeah. And thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Thank you, Have sir. a great day. You too. That actually made me feel really good. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I thought it was cool that we, like, our plan was to um, come and give it to a family. Um, and the guy was just ended up to be here by himself. So. Um, and he seemed really yeah. like. And he's the, lit up. You the can fact tell. that he's gonna you know, pass, it on. pass it on somebody else yeah. too, you know, to the make their day happier. He was, yeah. The fact you that know. he was here alone and that we all kind of came up to him, and I feel like it's kind of. I made think that day. he yeah. really lit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So about two and a half years ago, uh, a few of us just got together and um, we started sharing a wealth of information. It was for small business owners. These are good shows to attend. Uh, this is where a great resources for supplies. This is how to source your products on Etsy or anywhere on the internet. And, and we said, you know, this is a wealth of information that should be available to everybody. Um, and, and we're willing to share that and we're willing to collaborate. And then suddenly it was a space where we were lifting each other up and we were being positive and sharing ideas and figuring out how we could work together and it just turned into this beautiful space of positivity it, it turned into its own culture basically was what it was, it was because no matter the, the a and sage so share accept it's a really powerful piece with what we do because it's literally spinning every less than positive experience into well what did we learn from this how are you going to progress from this how are you going to grow as a business from an experience that wasn't what you were hoping it was going to be and and so we just kept spinning <laughs> this culture of positivity until you know everybody just wanted to be a part of it and every time we presented ourselves everybody's like yeah this sounds like something that completely jives with who I am as a small business creative, as an artisan, as a musician, as a writer. It just resonated with everybody because who doesn't want to feel uplifted and supported? You have to be extremely quiet if you're gonna be in this room. How about you take that to the other room? Perfect. Okay, hey, sweetie. There. <laughs> okay. Okay, take Yeah, you can take those balloons home. Bye, see ya. Go be good. Quiet, quiet, quiet. So one of the greatest things that Sage does is focuses on the purpose of the artist. We really put the artist front and center with everything that we do. It's not necessarily about what the person coming to our events is going to experience. It's about how the artist is going to feel providing that experience. So other things that we plan to do in the community would be um, something of kind of like an artist in residence where someone in the community has an opportunity to apply to work one-on-one -on -one with one of our artists in the artistic medium that the artist um, 
displays in and then you know six weeks later we're gonna have an art show and all that work that's been created with a collaboration of someone from the community and an artist from the community is gonna be on display and so it's, it's a really beautiful thing to take art to take the artists to say you have something that's valuable you have something that can enhance the community economically personally mentally and really provide a platform for that to happen with neighbors, with community members, with this entire area, as long as we have the support to continue. So our hopes with Creative Community is not only to provide a space for artists to interact, to share their talents, to provide the materials and the things needed for others to express themselves, but our hope is that the community will realize the necessity of a space like this, the necessity of an art incubator, um, the time and the effort and the support that is needed on the outside in order for us to continue on the inside. And, and that being said, whether it's that you share who we are and what we're doing, whether it's that you cheer us on because Green Bay is offering something really unique. This is, this is Green Bay's interpretation of what it means to have arts and culture. This is something that is not being done <laughs> in very many communities. And it's so vital and it's so important and it's something to be so incredibly proud of because we were once seen as a community lacking the talents, as a community that was lacking in the arts and that is so untrue. There is so much potential with within the city limits that we don't need to go to other communities in order to experience arts and culture. It's all right here. So we put the pop-up park in spring of 2019. Our purpose behind doing that was to activate an area that wasn't activated before. So that piece of property uh, was vacant. There was nothing on it and we decided why not make it something cool? That's what we do here on Broadway. Uh, so we had a team of volunteers come out for a full day and build the entire park um, within that time frame. And it was very cool to see uh, the before and the after because it's, it was really a grassy piece of land that's now colorful and active and vibrant. Um, people, we, every time I would drive by or walk by, somebody would be in there doing homework or meetings or just kids playing in there, um, having a place to hang out, go to meetings, things like that. So our purpose behind doing the pocket park was to activate a space that wasn't active. And that was what happened at the pop-up gallery. We had uh, just a couple going to sushi and they walked through this pop-up park and there was artists and music and food and they were like, we're just on our way to sushi, but what is this? What's going on here? And they had commented that, you know, you don't see stuff like this around Green Bay. You see stuff like this in Chicago, New York, Seattle, um, larger cities. So it was very cool um, to see people describe us as a larger city because while Green Bay is a very, very large city, uh, it doesn't always have those big city ideas or mindsets. And so it's nice that we're being a part of that change um, in perception of what our downtown is. So the pop-up gallery was a collaboration with On Broadway Inc. and their intern at the time. And um, basically it was just an inclusive opportunity for any artist in the Green Bay area to participate in a gallery type setting where they're able to display their work. We didn't attach any jury fee. So everything that we did was completely volunteer on behalf of Sage for people to be proud to display the courage <laughs> that it took to even have their work out on display. And then additionally, um, we created these houses and what it did was instead of a traditional art gallery setting where you would have walls and art on the walls and you wouldn't necessarily be interacting with the person that was also looking at the art was that you had the ability to see the person across from you. So where I was looking at this art, they were looking at that art, we could still see each other. So it emphasized that community while being these absolutely adorable houses <laughs> at the same time. And then finally, we. We made a premise that if you were going to have an art piece at the pop-up gallery, that it be touchable. So that when we had art that was low and within hand's reach of a five-year-old child or a 37-year-old adult, that if there were hands on it, that was not only acceptable, but it was encouraged. So for me, a really pinnacle moment was that right when we opened at seven o'clock, there was a family of five that came to the entrance and mom knelt down to her three smaller kids and said, don't touch anything. 
And then I got to follow that up with, no, 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 touch the art. That's what it's there for. Some of the art was wearable. I'm a toy maker. Some of it was huggable. It was just really great to see the relief come into the parents' eyes of, oh my gosh, my kids can actually interact with what's being presented here. So I'm Stefan Kieber Freeman. Uh, I own Kieber Freeman Arts, LLC. I'm an artist. I'm, I'm really, I'm a full-time dad. Um, I have a one-year-old. So, I mean, that's my life, my, my, my little girl. That's what I do full-time. And, um, and when she's napping, I'm a professional artist. I do uh, spray paintings um, using just kind of everyday stuff, really. But I use mostly Rust-Oleum um, times two glossy spray paint. <laughs> um, for everyone ever ask, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I do a lot of landscapes and, and sceneries. Um, a lot of people, <laughs> I always get a kind of a kind of a chuckle, kind of get annoyed sometimes um, when people always ask. Uh, I say I'll do spray painting. I'm like, oh, you must do stuff on the train cars, and uh, you must do something on uh, like graffiti stuff. And I'm just like, no, I don't. Um, I don't like one. I don't like to do anything for free for the most part. I do things for charitable events, obviously, but um, I don't like to do stuff for free a lot of the times. I feel like if you have a skill um, and you can market yourself well, then you should get paid for your skills. And it's a skill. It's not like something I was born with. I, I became an artist. I made myself an artist. Um, I mean, my earliest memory is me being an artist. <laughs> it's me yeah. trying to be an artist, me trying to draw something because I saw someone else do it. And I thought it was super cool. <laughs> uh, I'm an artist, you know, and I mean, I do other stuff. I'm also a businessman. Um, apparently, I'm good at that. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess well, I guess time will tell if I'm good at it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so far. <laughs> I, I think I'm, I, I'm, I think I'm a, a bit better than the average. Um, and that's me being humble but at the same time being boastful <laughs> mm -hmm. right. uh, because uh, I can talk to people and I can market myself and I am willing to do certain things to, to uh, so people can kind of get recognition people can see me uh, but I have fun you know and I don't know I think my ability to talk to people and, and just be able to help people understand my work better I realize that in order to understand my work better they gotta understand me better and a lot of times people will buy me quote unquote buy me buy my story as opposed to buying just what the artwork shows because the artwork shows one thing and then you hear what I'm talking to them about and they learn about more about me and my family and how I got to do this process and then they appreciate the art more. It's almost kinda how like when when like artists become famous after they die because people learn more about them and learn more about the history and the backstory. And then they didn't know that when they were alive and then it's like all of a sudden oh, this person did XYZ, blah 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 oh, this piece has more value now. And that's why, like, Basia has pieces that are sell for $10 million now. He would have never seen that when he was alive because no one put the time in to learn him. And so I'm giving people an opportunity, almost making people learn me. And then from that, they add more value to my work yeah. from just the interaction. Yeah. And so that's why I guess I prefer to talk to people and I prefer to do art shows and that sort of stuff. What kind of compels you? Not, like, obviously to show up is cool, right? But, like, what kind of compels you? Or how did you get connected with demonstrating at those? Um, good question. So, after I practiced spray painting on my own for a while, um, when I first saw spray painting, I was in Rome. I studied abroad there when I, um, when I was an undergrad at UW Stevens Point. Um, and so I first saw spray painting as a live demonstration thing. And that's kind of what I took from it. Um, it's something that could be done live. Um, and that was the, like, the large appeal I found that a lot of people liked is that they can see the painting being made and still not believe that what they saw, you know, you know, I tell someone to do spray paintings and they're like, okay, I've seen it before, but I still don't understand how it's done. Um, and after I, I learned about it and I practiced it enough on my own, um, I decided I wanted to go back to being a performer. Backpedal a little bit. Um, in high school, I was in band all through high school. So I was a musician, marching band, symphony orchestra, symphony at a um, different types of um, band levels as a percussionist. So I'm used to performing. Um, I'm in Taekwondo um, and I do the combat, the combat part of Taekwondo, so sparring, uh, which 
in some ways is, is a demonstration. You know, I'm out there fighting other people, and people are watching. You know, um, and, and just and then I was uh, I hope to create the step team for my fraternity Sigma Tau Gamma here at Stevens Point. So that's another performance. So I'm used to performing and demonstrating in some sort of fashion. Um, so I think that's kind of a innate thing that I like to do. Um, Subliminally. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, so once I got confident enough, I decided, hey, I'm going to see if I could do some some live paintings, you know, at some art shows in town and just some events. And I, it wasn't even art shows originally. It was just events. Mm-hmm. Also, from a selling standpoint, people like I've learned that people like to buy it. Uh, and by it, I mean the painting um, because they also buy the experience of watching me do it. So a lot of times um, artists will do artwork and then they'll just present it, and then that's what it is. And that's why artists don't tend to like to talk to a lot of people because they want the artwork to speak for itself, mm-hmm. which is fine, I get that. I know and I've learned that sometimes you have to speak for the artwork because um, people see things very differently, very different back based on life experiences, based on actual vision, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. based on lighting, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you see it, you being the artist, see it as what you've made. I made this ocean scene, it has this feel, I did it with these music or whatever. You, the viewer, sees it whatever way they see it. Oh, it looks like water. Cool. Oh, it looks like an acrylic painting. Cool. Doing it live in front of people, they don't have to guess about any of it. They can just see it. Oh, how did you do that? Oh, I watched him do that. I watched him take these cans and it looked like a mess, but then he turned it around and all of a sudden, it's this waterfall with a night sky, and yeah. I'm not sure what happened. I mi- I blinked and I missed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, it's also a performance. It is a performance, um, mm-hmm. and this performance, from a business point, got a supply, and from a business point, it's a good selling point. Mm-hmm. It's like meeting people is the main thing. So I was trying to figure out events that I can go to where I can meet people, people that I haven't met before. Mm-hmm. I've done Art Street before, so I'll know I'll be there. I figured, hey, if I did another event in Green Bay earlier in the month, then I can promote Art Street too, because mm-hmm. I'll be there. I already know I'm going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm at, you know, I can do some demonstrations. Hey, if you found something, you didn't get something today, I'll be at Art Street in a couple weeks. Come find me there too. Yeah. Mosaic Arts was actually founded in 1979, but it was founded as the Northeast Wisconsin Arts Council. And from what I've read, it was founded to um, really provide the artists locally to have some kind of means or vehicle to um, display their art, you know, so that's where Art Street came about. So they formed because of that, and then over time, over 40 years, it's changed from um, the Northeast Wisconsin Arts Council, then it kind of split off into, um, I believe it was New Arts, and so it's kind of changed, it's been called different things, and about 2013, Mosaic Arts came about. But Mosaic Arts was really founded to be an advocacy source for local artists, and it has changed and developed and seen many different things at one point um, before my time. There was Art Gras, Art Street, Bayfest came in. Mosaic Arts now, our main focus is Art Gras, Art Street, of course, and then a Holiday Art Market. So those are three events that we have. But we're also trying to um, kind of rejuvenate our programming. This past summer, we had a program called You Are Art and it was geared toward children. And what we did is we would read a very short book, and this was at the Titletown District, we'd read a short book, and it pertained to art or some kind of social emotional learning aspect, and then we would incorporate an art project. So, for instance, we talked about Matisse and how he was a great artist, but as time went on, he became bedridden because of things that went on physically so he could no longer really paint but what he could do 
was tear paper up and create these great mixed media pieces. So kind of showing kids, hey, you know, even though you're limited or you, you can't do this or your talent is here, you know, think outside of the box. So that's kind of mosaic in a nutshell. So originally I'm not from here, but I have been here for like 20 years. Um, but this was my first year as the executive director for Mosaic Arts. So I went around to the community where Art Street was taking place to just remind them, hey, we're shutting down your streets for three days, just want to let you know. Um, and what was really cool was the excitement that the people in that neighborhood, downtown Green Bay, expressed about Art Street. So Art Street has been around now for 38 years. It is an open air festival. It's at the end of August every year. Three days, we have about 200 artists. We have demonstrating artists on top of that. We have two stages of music. We have a children's area. We have um, community groups coming in. We have a whole food area, but what this is doing is kind of bringing the arts into the streets. It's a free event and there's really, there's all kinds of mediums. There's you know, ceramics, there's painting, there's music, mm -hmm. there's literary, there's, a, you know, it's a feast for the senses. Mm -hmm. So really, um, and the price points are kind of varied too, which is kind of nice. So mm -hmm. it really exposes a lot of people to some really cool art. So we are here at the Ignite Market, it's the third Ignite Market of the year. The second one was canceled, so expecting a nice big turnout for this third one here. What we have here today are these uh, mystery makes created by Sage Green Bay members. So we're going to be handing these out and hopefully get some smiles on some faces tonight. Here is the, uh, these are mystery makes by members of Sage Green Bay. And so these are just like random crafts and just different types of things that they put together. There's a positive message inside each one of these. So if you would like, you can have one and you can gift it to somebody around here. Necessarily, but uh, this piece of art for free. Uh, just always had my back. I know you got mine, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
I see your true colors shining through. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Puts it on right away. Awesome. Great. Thank, Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>
here at Coffee House aims to make drinks with quality ingredients that sort of lead to more than just a caffeine experience where you're enjoying the, the, be the beverage itself. Um, and so we do like top shelf teas, coffee, espresso, and even soda. We get our soda from Wisco Pop, which is a local uh, soda pop company that has just real ingredients in their drinks as well. So we really just want to be transparent with what we're giving to people and keep it at a high quality level. So the way that Cure After Hours started was I'm actually a local musician and I was trying to book some shows in the area and I just noticed that unless you're in the bar scene and you like to play lots of covers that people know, you're not gonna find much. Um, so I sort of realized if I wanted to play a set that was outside of that realm, I'd have to create it myself. And so I had a contact with Kira where we sort of teamed up to organize the initial Kira After Hours that was back in April of 2019. And it ended up being like a great turnout where we just gathered local artists, local musicians, and we brought a bunch of people into that space and created an atmosphere cultivated by art, which is a really beautiful thing. Um, so that's how Cure After Hours started, and we've turned it into a series where we bring in different artists each time, which sort of gives them a platform um, because it's not easy to find that around here. And so our mission is to really just invest in the community by sharing things that um, sharing things that aren't typically prioritized, be, being music and art. And so that's what Cure After Hours is. So basically I, um, I was working this job that I just couldn't stand anymore. It was like breaking my heart to go to this job and do what I was doing every day and like treat people the way I had to and get treated the way that I was getting treated by people. So I quit my job and I do all this creative stuff and I started going to open mics like every single night of the week and I met this incredible community and they were telling me that it was like so great to see like a woman performing because that doesn't happen often. So I'm sitting here thinking like, well, I know all these creative, beautiful women, like, where are they though? Like, they're hiding in their homes, like, creating, you know what I mean? So, then I was like, well, you know what, let's, let's make an, a, an event where we can really highlight, like, all these goddesses, like, in, in the local community. And then I, you know, brought it to the attention of Stacy, who is incredible, and involved with Sage, that's an awesome uh, artisan group is just helping all, a bunch of artists helping each other grow um, so it, it's incredible to have her on board with this and then Ricky who opened Pepper and is just holding the space for all of us to fill it with beauty um, and we came to this idea that you know rather than just highlighting the goddesses maybe we could highlight the feminine energy in all of us and appreciate it men and women so you know like the whole the whole issue was that it seemed that things were, you know, like very like heavily one way and not the other, but instead of trying to physically like combat that, we're like, no, let's all unite and let's all show our feminine energy. And so Feminine, the Art of Knowing was born and here we are sitting in it and it's incredible to see all, all these creations that are like resonant and so well thought out poetry is incredible. Stacy had that idea um, to have the, the poetry like framed and hanging for people to really like sit, sit with and understand um, 
know, rather than the spoken word's great and you can take it in and it's like really powerful, but it's even more powerful to have to put yourself there. So the poetry is just how, how that came together was really wow. And all these art displays are just beautiful. All the colors, all the lines, all these people in here supporting each other. It is a dream come true, really. So overall, like, pretty good success. In oh, incredible. Time. Yeah, it's better than I ever could have imagined. Not exactly radio here at the oh, wait, wait. I was Ignite gonna... Market. Ooh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm all over this. Um, so <laughs> you're at the we're at the Ignite Market. The Ignite which, Market. Where is that? It's in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Is it a night market? It is a night market. Is that why it's uh, a pun there? That is. Yes. Because it's uh, Ignite. Ignite. So we're oh. like. Oh. Yeah. Ha! I am catching everything Holy right now. Shit, I've been incredible. here for like two hours and I'm just like... I, we've only had two beers together. <laughs> Says you. Yeah, together. Yeah, you're right. Um, oh, not exactly radio here at the Ignite Market here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Tony and I made the drive up from our safe houses in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Drove two hours for Xavier and his ass. Good friend of the pod. Friend of the pod. Friend. All right. That's cute. Sir. What, uh, what, what does music do for you? Helps it keeps me cool, calm, and collect. Hell yeah. Who are your favorite artists? Adam Lambert, Toby Keith, okay. and Penny and Disco. Nice. Ooh. Good choice. You cover a bunch of them. Yeah. We're in. We're in. We're in. We're in. Tony, you're going to be in the background? All right, background Tony. Yes. Background Tony. All right. <laughs> so guys, what does music do for you? Uh, music inspires me, and it uh, keeps me working. It gets me through the day. Yeah. Who are, who are your favorite artists? Uh, Tenacious D. Against War. War? War. Hell yeah, I saw them last week. Oh, nice. Great, right, Chicago. So it gives me a chance to relax and enjoy something without having to watch it. That's good. And then, uh, who are your favorite artists? I think I'd have to go Bob Seger at the end of the day. Bob Seger at the end of the day? Any close seconds? Yeah, uh, the 36 Chambers of the Death was the first album that I ever got as a kid. Oh, shit. Oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking about just, you know, copying my shirt and just writing Don't Be a Dick. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Never mind now. Oh, you can do it too? No. Never. Well, I should have communicated to you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't. Give me uh, one of your favorite artists. One of my favorite artists of all time, Sis Love It Down. Gotta say it. Alright. Hey, don't do that. Sis Love It Down's good. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, I'm here. Up. I'm Tony. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm here, here too. I like, forgot. I'm sorry. He my bad. Didn't introduce my bad. I'm, I'm, my bad. He's part of the podcast too. So, you just had a killer set. Thank you. Let's talk about your name. Thank you. I'm Sergio Slayer. You're in the Galactic Neighbor with the Flavor to Savor. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, you said you're from Missouri, right? Yes, I'm from Missouri. Oh, yes, I represent cool. Columbia, Missouri, right in the heart, right in the middle, right between Kansas City and St. Louis. All right, well, thank you for coming to Green Bay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so two things. What does music do for you? Music does everything for me. Music relieves stress for me. Music's the inspiration for me. Music's motivation for me. Music's just like all encompassing pretty much for me. And then, besides yourself, mm -hmm. 
Who are your favorite artists? All right, uh, a couple. Well, my fa favorite artists are uh, a couple guys are in a building with me. Uh, Van Gogh out of Columbia, Steady P out of Kansas City. Other than that, like uh, mainstream wise, Andre 3000 is basically my muse. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I love Andre 3000. I love uh, Kendrick stuff. Uh, I love Chance the Rapper stuff right now. Yeah. Um, Earth Gang's really good. Uh, Flat Flip Zombies are really dope. Nice. Um, also, shout out more local people in Columbia, Missouri, man. He by the Prince is dope as hell. Uh, Easy the Assassin is dope as hell as well. And uh, if I'm missing you, then you know I, I still love y'all. So, <laughs> be a musician, you gotta be a salesman too. Yeah. So let's just, what's your pitch when, when you need to pitch your music? What's your pitch? Give it to us as well. What's my pitch? Yeah. I really don't have a pitch, man. Honestly, I really don't. He just does what he does. I honestly he just, just let the music. Kill it. I just let yeah, the music. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, yeah. how can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Musical.ly. You can find me on SoundCloud under Sergio Slayer. Spotify under Sergio Slayer. Uh, Apple Music under Sergio Slayer. Uh, most of all my music's on my Bandcamp. SergioSlayer.Bandcamp.com. Hell yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Sergio Slayer. Sir, first we're going to ask, what does music mean to you? Music means to me, it brings me back to a simpler time. <laughs> do you nothing, not listen, nothing. Do you not listen to more recent music? Or? No, not, okay, not, late, not, late, not lately at least. <laughs> I mean, my thing is always, there's so much out there, sometimes it's easy to just go to the familiar. Yeah, yeah for a while there I was listening to like a lot of rap, but now I'm going to like the more alternative punk stuff lately. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so like, I was, gonna, your favorite artist right now. I was just gonna say I've been listening to a lot of like the hives and um, oh, yeah. the directs, new politics lately. Yeah, I've been listening to them. Uh, yeah. For a while, I was listening to a lot of rap, but now I'm back to. Uh, so. <laughs> it's my turn to off the wall question. Oh, uh, he's putting you on. Song. What? Okay, so what's your favorite song to listen to in the shower? In the shower? Yeah. I've actually been listening to the country in the shower. All right, yeah. Yeah. Fuck out of here. There we go. We're done. Yeah. No, fuck that guy. So, Ben. Yes. What are you doing? Oh, shit. Hey. Um, making a poster. Can we swear? Yeah, why not? Uh, I don't think so. I, 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 anyways, we're making a punk rock poster. We're going to actually have you hold on to it, Xavier. Oh, oh. Um, This is Lost and Found Art Collective Exhibition. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of everything, a lot of art, we got music tonight. What Lost and Found is, it's an art collective. Um, the reason I called it Lost and Found, you know, everyone gets a little lost, but you have that art and music, and that brings you together, and that makes you found. So that's why I call it Lost and Found. A little bit about it, uh, right now, we have uh, core members of about 30. We're, uh, we're running deep, we're gonna be running deeper. Uh, one thing I, I, I like to incorporate is not only myself, but other people that uh, necessarily don't have the opportunity to get into art shows. Um, this is it's for those people, and myself included. You know, if if you don't, you know, you're not in the art shows. You're not you're not at the big uh, events in town. Well, this is your event, and, and we're, we're looking to build on that. Um, one way or another, I, I will get every person that wants to be in an art show, they will be in an art show because I will find them or they will find me and they will be in a lost and found art show, I can, I can guarantee that.
right here you got the Lost and Found box set. What does it contain? Here's what it contains. One shirt, one patch, one sticker, one pin, one postcard. Let me open that up for you here. You got all the goodies inside. And how do you get one of these? You just pay $25. Come to me, I'll get you one. So, what this means to me, what the Lost and Found Art Collective means to me, um, it's a great way to get your name and your face out there, get your art out there, get everyone involved in the community who should be involved in the community. Um, because without it, we wouldn't know that some of these people exist. Like, for example, I've never met Jacob Bacon before until I did the last one. I, I heard his name, but I hadn't seen his art before. Um, same thing with uh, some of these other people. I just haven't ever seen them before. And to see their art on the wall and be able to talk to them and say, hey, how's it going? La 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 la. It's, it's an experience. It's a unique experience. and old and everything in between and there's not a fine art and a arts and crafts there's everything in between now and i think people are starting to appreciate that more and understand the value of putting their money into uh, local art it's it's not the same as buying a painting from target you see a piece and you see a person and you know that by buying their art uh, you're supporting them and their life and whatever they're doing and I think people are starting to really understand the importance behind that. Um, yeah, I mean, side note, I've mm -hmm. only been in Green Bay for a few years, okay. um, but I hear people talk about it a lot on how they've left Green Bay because there was an art here and now they've come back 10, 20 years later and they realize that there is art everywhere. Um, and I'm hoping that our district is adding to that because we've We've had over five murals painted this year alone. So it's not even just art that you have to buy and put in your home, but there's art on your streets that you drive by every day. And I think that that's the art that is starting to change a little bit more. It's not art that you buy, it's like art that you feel and that you see every day. And that's really important. And I mean, that's here in the property district, that's what we do. So I think that that's pretty cool. Green Bay is pretty cool. I'll, I, um... It's interesting because Green Bay is, um, I don't know the exact size of Green Bay, but it's, it's, it seems to be a bit more it's more populated than Stevens Point. Uh, I think mostly because of uh, the stadium and stuff. So you have that traffic. Um, but the art scene in general, I think it's still, like like a lot of places in Wisconsin, it's still growing. Um, and this year it seems to be flourishing um, because we're all just kind of popping up. It seems like seemingly out of nowhere, but um, organizations, artists, people are getting more connected in Wisconsin this year. And, that, and I mean, Green Bay is, is, is I'm seeing that as well. Um, a lot of places are getting more murals put up. A lot of places are getting um, more artists connected with each other for, for collaboration events. I see a, a lot of that in Green Bay um, from just artist friends that I have that I connect with and they connect with other people. And I see they're collaborating with this person or this person DJing, so this person's doing art there. And this event's happening and so this other group who's gonna piggyback on that and they're gonna work with each other. Um, that seems to be really prominent in Green Bay, um, that connection factor, and it may be because of Sage, maybe because I know, I know Sage stuff, so, <laughs> or at least I'm learning through Sage stuff, and, um, and that's, that's kind of been my, I don't know, view, what I've been exposed to, there's a lot of stuff happening in Green Bay, and I just kind of poke my head in every now and then to kind of, Art Street's always a big thing, like thousands and thousands of people come to Art Street so many people and I've done Art Street three or four times now and I don't live in Green Bay <laughs> and I, I keep getting in somehow and, and now I'm even getting invited to do it um, which I guess is kudos to me for doing something that's cool um, but also they seem to not not, the, not Art Street in general but people come to Art Street not just for the art but to see what artists are there and then that connection factor is super big in Green Bay I, think. I mean I I got connected with like three different people just from being at Art Street that emailed me like, hey, 
we got this event going on. Hey, we do this thing with our organization. And so it seems like once people find out things that are happening in Green Bay, from what I noticed at least, um, they seem to come there to try to connect with people. And I think way more places need to do that. I think Steve's point is, is working on that and is doing it a lot better. Um, but Green Bay, I think Green Bay has that down right now. Could they work on some stuff? Probably. I mean, every place can work on some stuff. Uh, opportunities available, um, making sure um, people know about the opportunities that might be available, making sure that um, more opportunities can be created for people. And that's just going to happen over time. That's just with anything. Um, but yeah, it's cool. Um, it's, I think it's ready to just pop. It's ready to explode. And, and that's very exciting because when I moved here back in 1996, we had Art Street and we had a few things, but not like the options that we have today. And it's very cool to see that. I mean, it's cool to see the murals. It's cool to see this space that we're in today too. Um, you know, art, as much as we do support fine arts, it's what Art Street and Artie Grob, they both are, but I'm not an artist. So, you know, I would feel much more comfortable in a space where people are learning, kind of like an incubator. And to me, that's very exciting because you're showing support and, and you know, art has had so many benefits, especially to, you know, our mental health. And the studies show that it does have a positive impact. Look at our veterans and art projects. And, you know, so it's nice that people are realizing that art is more than just the pretty picture on the museum wall that you can't touch. It's a lot more than that. And I'm glad that it's finally coming around. And especially in Green Bay, there are so many different organizations and in De Pere and, and Door County, but especially in this area, there's so many different groups. And you know, the one thing I want to do as Mosaic is get to know these groups like Sage and um, the Art Garage and the Artisan Center and, you know, just work together. And if we, if there's an issue um, that we, a good issue that we need to work on together, I know exactly who I can call and say, hey, I need this, this, this to make this happen. So I see a lot more collaboration. So for a while, I almost deemed that there wasn't one. I had this perspective that there just wasn't things going on outside of the bar scene. And so I was intending on actually leaving Green Bay to find it somewhere else, but then I had this moment of insight where it's like, well, this is a great landscape to bring it to then. And it's sort of strange, as soon as I started investing into that scene in the area, I've noticed that it was jumping around elsewhere. So perhaps I just didn't know the right people at the time. And so through creating community events, it's like like-minded people start to come together and then it enhances like what else is going on and it sort of challenges other people to create events that instill this, just this like free open space of art and music. Okay, so the current arts culture in Green Bay is strongly opinionated for me because I've only been here for five years. So I'm sort of on the outside looking in, but the observations that I have is that um, there is a dominant arts culture present. There are so many talented people in the Green Bay area willing to lend <laughs> their art and their creativity. Um, but what hasn't happened is a support system the support system from the community that says we want this, we want this to happen, we're gonna make sure that the talent that's in our area feels supported, feels uplifted, feels financially provided for, quite frankly, because an artist can't survive unless they're being paid for the work that they do. Um, feels valued, right? Um, there's this perception that because we're an artist and because we're so desperate to be seen, that we're willing to do anything and everything it takes to make that happen for ourselves. And that's simply not true. It's actually a pretty offensive way of looking at things. And so when we look at there's, you know, beautiful space that can be beautified even more, it's literally budget for that artist to come in here and put that art on display um, and, and show us that our talent bears value, that our talent is a staple for this community 
that our talent is going to bring more people in this community. Our talent is going to sustain a culture outside of football and cheese curds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and that we have the ability to create something beautiful when we all come together. You don't all have to be artists to support the arts.